as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Hey everyone, welcome to Branch Together, episode 13. You're not going to want to miss today. Today we're reading from Mark 13, and oh boy, there's a lot going on in this chapter. We will not have all the answers, but we'll read together, and we'll learn together, and we'll see what we can figure out today. Before we read, like always, we're going to take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the chance to be together, to read together, to talk, to discuss, and to learn together. Help us not just talk and discuss and learn, but help us grow. Help us grow in loving you. Help us grow in loving one another. Give us wisdom today as we read some difficult and confusing words. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now, as Jesus was going out of the temple courts, One of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look at these tremendous stones and buildings. Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left on another. All will be torn down. So while he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to take place? Jesus began to say to them, Watch out that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and they will mislead many. When you hear of wars and rumor of wars, do not be alarmed. These things must happen, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise up in arms against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines. These are but the beginning of birth pains. You must watch out for yourselves. You will be handed over to councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand before governors and kings because of me as a witness to them. First, the gospel must be preached to all nations. When they arrest you and hand you over for trial, do not worry about what to speak. But say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking but the Holy Spirit. Brother will hand over brother to death and a father his child. Children will rise against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the roof must not go down or go inside to take anything out of his house. The one in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing their babies in those days. Pray that it may not be in winter, for in those days there will be suffering unlike anything that has happened from the beginning of the creation that God created until now, or ever will happen. And if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would be saved. But because of the elect whom he chose, he has cut them short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe him. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the elect. Be careful, I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man arriving in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send angels, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. Whenever its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also you, when you see these things happening, know that he is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But as for that day or hour, no one knows it, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, except the Father. Watch out. Stay alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. 
He left his house and put his slaves in charge, assigning to each his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to stay alert. Stay alert, then, because you do not know when the owner of the house will return, whether during evening, at midnight when the rooster crows, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he returns suddenly. What I say to you, I say to everyone, stay alert. Okay, so this is quite the ominous passage. You may be terrified or scratching your head. Parts of the Bible are difficult to understand and interpret. And this is one of those parts. And that's okay. This was written in a different culture than ours. And they are drawing on different sources and symbols that we might not understand at first glance. This particular passage is called apocalyptic literature. It's a specific genre of literature with its own style and its own rules. We have this abomination of desolation that Jesus brings up. There's been a lot of debate about that. And uh, this, this chapter is confusing. And I'll just throw out a, a plug here. If you're local to New Jersey, uh, Branch Church, the church I'm a part of, has classes that are part of our commissional institute where we're going to dive into learning about the culture and background of the Old and New Testaments. We discuss how to interpret different types of biblical literature and, and all that good stuff. So if you're around here, we'd love to have you come and join a class and dig in deeper to really wrestle with some of the things we see in chapters and other parts of the Bible like this. Now, okay, let's talk a bit about making sense of this chapter. And I'm just going to try to make a, a few short but insufficient thoughts. This chapter is all about Jesus letting his followers know that they need to be on guard and that following him is a difficult road that leads to suffering as it leads to new life. Followers of Jesus need to be ready, looking out for whatever comes their way. They'll be tempted to put their trust in buildings or religion. Jesus says, don't do that. Even this great temple, and they're looking at the, the temple of Solomon, this huge, magnificent thing. He says, even this temple is going to be destroyed. There won't be two stones on top of each other. They'll be tempted to go after and trust all sorts of people claiming to be great. And these people might even have miraculous powers. Jesus says, don't be tempted by that either. Many might come claiming to be like Jesus, but Jesus' path leads to suffering and to death. Jesus wants his followers to be on guard against all the false things that will claim their attention and allegiance. The path of Jesus is not simple or easy. Other false messiahs or leaders will make promises to make it easy. Religious institutions will try to make it easy or ask for your trust. And Jesus is pointing his followers to a different way. He is getting ready for his own death. It's an emotional time for him. And he wants to let his followers know that the path of Jesus is a path that leads to death and then resurrection. But death first, death to self and death to every other allegiance. This is why Jesus says, he who finds his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake will find it. This is why Jesus says that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. This is why Jesus says whoever wants to be great must become the servant. And this is why Jesus simply says, take up your cross and follow me. There's certainly a lot that we could discuss today. Please get in on the conversation by sharing your thoughts and questions below.